Titanium, 16 pounds. Had it custom engineered. See, when Marines invade a foreign country, we gotta buy all our own sh**. Me and Brad spent $500 of our own money just fixing up the Humvee. Bought our own antennas, filters, cami nets, and painted it ourselves. So yeah, Holmes. We pimper. That was a clip from the HBO series Generation Kill. It airs Sundays at 9 o'clock. Joining us now are the actors from the cast, James Renson. Good to see you. And real-life Staff Sergeant, Purple Heart winner, Eric Cooker. Good to have you guys with us. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Uh, tell us about the series. You, with the role you play, you're a technical advisor, but you're also now a TV star. I was a... Uh, I don't know <laughs> about <laughs> TV star. <laughs> but you served f four tours in Iraq, right? And one in Afghanistan. Yes, I did. So you know a little something about this. A little bit, a little bit. I've seen a little bit of combat. Uh, uh, the series is more about the guys' lives. Uh, it kind of introduces you to uh, everyday aspects for uh, a combat troop from day-to-day -day life in combat and the stresses that we have to go through and the choices we have to make. And you keep them honest on it? And you don't, don't let it get too Hollywood. Oh, I do, I do. Keep away from the, the, the nuclear hand, uh, hand grenades. And uh, we're, we're thinking about casting Chuck Norris for uh, the lead, but uh, we stayed away from that. And we went with PJ here. Yeah, he, I was available when Chuck wasn't. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so the Huckabee campaign. Of course, he's busy. He's busy. But tell us about what you saw, real life, what you bring into this to this show. Uh, just everything watching, just the way they uh, the dispersion of the vehicles, the way they did their tactics, the way they carried their weapons, the way they carried themselves, the way they wore the gear. Uh, Marines are very anal retentive creatures, and uh, recon Marines are about ten times as worse. So uh, just watching every little detail, making sure it, it's the way it needs to be. But you were saying as we were watching that clip that that was really going on. You were buying your own batteries for night vision goggles, having to fix up the Humvees. Is that true, Marines paying out of their own pockets? Uh, we were paying out of our own pocket. Uh, it wasn't as bad as some people think it is. It's just we wanted the best equipent we had, and we had to fill the gaps. Uh, First recon couldn't anticipate the gear we were going to need or what mission we were even going to do. We were operating totally different than what we normally do. Mike, you've seen this, right? This yeah, yeah this is a series. Yeah. It, it, is a, it is a great series. Papler it, finally it, got something right. Richard <laughs> Papler finally got something right. <laughs> but what it is, is it's this generation's version of Band of Brothers, actually, the great yeah. HBO series about World yeah. War II. Did you, did you, as an actor, find it overwhelming or difficult to grasp the fact from him? that nobody, no Marine jumps the berm for the flag or the country, you jump it for the guy next to you. Well, the, I, I think the really interesting thing is that like when I, when I first showed up on set in Africa, um, we we went right into boot camp to which Eric was running, and when you we scared like a little girl. yeah, I, was, I wet my drawers, and then um, but then after you know and like you know I I've lived in New York and I haven't come into contact with a lot of servicemen, but then we, on the set actually we became we became really 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 good friends, and then like after I sort of understood like the surrogate brotherhood that these guys had I mean it became so easy to understand that you know that these guys are all just there like doing their job for their country and then fighting for the guy next to them I mean it was it was really you know and and, and I feel like to a certain extent like just through my friendship with Eric, yeah, I totally understand it. Let, let me ask you guys what what is it about this series that gets a rock right? There have been so many stories that have been done about Iraq and so many just genuinely bad movies, bad TV series that nobody's going to see. This seems like the first one that struck a chord with critics and the American people. Why do you think that is? Every other series you see has a political agenda. They're trying to push something, push anti-war, pro-war. This series doesn't have any heroes. This story is the way it was. You get to meet Brad Colbert, you get to meet Josh Person, and uh, you get to see what they did. It's not trying to show the horrible things that that go on although you do see them but it's you know even you look at over there and some of the other series that were done they just threw so much extra drama in and they had to throw their little subplot where it didn't actually belong this series sticks to the book and the book stuck to uh, the way Evan Wright uh, observed it. So, so no political agenda it's just soldiers and marine stories. Oh yeah. definitely definitely. Well, yeah. well again you know as an actor uh, you know hanging with him listening to him uh, coming from New York City were you surprised, uh, how much of you were surprised, if any at all, that there's, there's no ideology out there when you get, when you get the gun in your hand? There's, 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 there just isn't. It's not a bumper sticker. Yeah, I was, I mean, I, of <laughs> course, like, I was really, really surprised uh, about how they 
conducted themselves. And then after a certain point, like, you know, I all, all of the training that they had received and stuff and sort of everything that they had been through, a, after a while, like, it sounded like something like, like that I was a little bit envious that I got, that I didn't get to have. Yeah, which was really weird. <laughs> you get a close look on uh, myself and uh, Jeffrey Carzales, the second unit military advisor. We traveled all Africa together and he came with us, so we had, we had our share of AK-47s in our face and pushed our way up through Zimbabwe and Zambia, so you got a little taste of that brotherhood. Oh, do you learn anything from these guys, or are they just the pansies you both assume they were? <laughs> uh, <they're, laughs> I, I did. It's actually great working with them. I, you know, I had this big uh, misconception of actors all being uh, little crybaby but uh, when they all showed up for the boot camp, they, they, they put 100% into it. I was actually very proud. A lot of the guys seemed the way they're represented are very proud of the way the actors represented them. Well, they, they may not be crybabies, but James has already admitted here on national TV he wet his pants. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. It, it happens, happens sometimes. At least you cry. <laughs> Well, well, guys, thanks so much. Uh, you're, you're really doing a great service. I really think you're getting it right and showing the human side of this war without shoving agendas down people's right. throats. I, that's, I think, don't you think, Mike, that's why they're watching this? Absolutely. That plus you get the sense of, of brotherhood yeah. in the thing. And thank you for your service. Yeah. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for your service. All right. All right yeah. You can catch the show. James Ransom, thank you. Sergeant <laughs> Eric Cocker on Generation Kill. It airs on HBO Sunday nights, 9 p.m. It's a great show. Check it out.